cold. So I needed, that's my, my attempt once to do the theme song for Johnny Carson. I couldn't remember how it went, so. <laughs> we invented that. <laughs> uh, good morning, family. Good morning, JC. Good morning, Ed.
us like the rain or like the spring. And we are gathered here to remember that, to worship God, and to be with one another. What a joy it is to be with all of you this morning and to be gathered here. We have a few announcements for the life of our congregation this morning. First, a special welcome to those who are joining us or maybe joining us for the first time, those who are visiting. Please know that whoever you are, wherever you might be on life's journey, you are very welcome here, and we are so glad to have you. That includes those joining us remotely from the comfort of their homes. We are so glad that you have joined us here. For where we are all gathered, there God is with us. Commitment Sunday is next week for our stewardship campaign. So I would invite you to be mindful of that and to consider what you might contribute to the life of our gathered community. We also have something interesting in the bulletin this morning. We have leaves. I don't know if this is typical here. This is my first Sunday, so I'm going with it, right? It's fall, it's beautiful. Uh, but no, in all seriousness, the, the, you should have received two leaves. One is to uh, write down on it something you are thankful for, and the other is a wish that you might have for the congregation. So something you're thankful for in keeping with the spirit of Thanksgiving in just a few weeks, something you are wishing for as we move forward together. We will uh, collect these in the basket, which is at the back of the sanctuary, and thank you to Bettina for coordinating all of this. You might have noticed coming in, there are some beautiful trees that are on the back doors of the sanctuary. We'll be affixing those. Um, so when you get a second, feel free to jot down those two things and leave them in the, uh, in the basket in the back. Uh, Advent is fast approaching, believe it or not. Uh, so leadership is in conversation about what we might do together for Advent, both for our worship services, but also for a adult uh, formation opportunity. Both discussion groups are uh, in conversation and in the works, so I invite you to stay tuned for that as well. Are there any other announcements for our gathering today? Then friends, let us continue and, oh, Sam, go ahead. Yeah, I do actually have one. Foggy. Did Lynn ever find those windshield wipers for the glass? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so as you may or may not know, um, Becky Baker, our uh, church administrator or office administrator, is going to be leaving us um, by the end of the year. Um, it's due to personal, uh, just increasing demands of personal family uh, I got guys. Can you mind if I having a heart attack breathing? <coughs> Due to uh, personal demands uh, from her increasing uh, increasing demands on her family obligations. So, you know, as you guys know, Becky has just been a blessing uh, to our church. Absolutely, she cares very deeply about our congregation. She actually really feels like part of the church family. And <coughs> excuse me. And as you know, she absolutely excelled. Uh, at her job in every way. So anyhow, the reason I'm up here today is to let you know that we've posted her position. We posted an ad, actually, and then her actual position uh, job description, uh, Rob has got up on our website, and we've actually now got a, a hiring spot um, on, our, on our homepage. However, often the best candidates come from um, 
word of mouth, right, from trusted people. So if you guys know any qualified candidates uh, for the role, we'd really appreciate if you talk to them about it and let them know that we're, uh, that we're looking for someone. So the job, I brought this up, so I want to show you the job description. So it is very thorough. This is page one of two. So what we did was we put together an ad, and I'd like to read it to you just to give you a flavor for the position. So Woodmont United Church of Christ, Milford is searching for a part-time administrative assistant who is energetic, self-directed, and flexible. Or, <coughs> excuse me, organizational skills are a must, as well as strong computer proficiency and MS Word applications. The administrative assistant will work closely with the pastor and church members who chair various committees. Aptitude in use of social media platforms and Zoom technology is required. Bookkeeping experience is a plus. Uh, the position is 12 to 16 hours a week. With it doesn't have insurance benefits. Um, there's some opportunity to work remotely. The salary is $18 an hour, and it's negotiable depending on, upon experience. Uh, so again, the if the, the ad is posted, but the details are on our website, so it directs people to go to our website, um, woodmontucc.org, and then our, or send an email to our church email address. So anyhow, um, if you know any qualified candidates, we really appreciate your help in pointing them um, our way. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else? Let us continue to worship our God in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. Saints Sunday. Come, let us worship the God who gathers all of humanity together in common love.
please remain standing as we say the unison prayer of invocation. Holy, Holy and gathered God, 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 we thank you for calling us to be your people. You deem us worthy to be called your children, and you invite us to be members of the beloved community of your followers, the church. Grant us eyes to see and ears to hear who is with us today. As we remember the saints who have gone before us, may your memory and your faithfulness serve us to the new life of life. Allow your hope in us to overflow into our world, stirring us to live as people drawn together in love. We pray all this in your holy name. hear the good news that scripture tells us which is that we are a forgiven people that the old has gone and the new has come both in our world and in us in Christ Jesus we are forgiven thanks be to God Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and let us at least greet one another with a little bit of peace as much as our situation allows, let us greet one another with Christian love. Peace be with you. Peace with the Lord. Wayne, Bruce, peace be with you. Got you there, buddy. Jill, we got you too, Reverend Jill. Peace be with you all. Now I'd like to invite Ann to come forward for a mission. Up and down. Thank you. I'm here today to talk about our mission for the month of November, which is the Bethel Center, right here in Milford, right down the street on New Haven Avenue. Uh, I would mention that their name has changed because they used to be, when they found, were founded, the Bethel Shelter. But it changed to center, and I think one of the reasons is they offer so much more than a bed and three meals a day. They have a lot of services and programs. For example, uh, in the winter, they're part of a uh, area-wide, anyway, I'm not sure if it's statewide, no free shelter. So when the temperature do drops below a certain amount, the shelters are really required to bring in some extra cots and the, the people aren't sleeping on the street. They may not be in the whole program, but they're off the streets for the cold nights. Another new program that they're um, running right now is a parenting program, which is funded by the Early Childhood, Office of Early Childhood, and they follow the Healthy Families of America curriculum, which is one that's very, very good. Uh, families are strengthened by the parents learning positive parent techniques and um, 
you know, which support really attachment and a support to decreasing children's challenging behaviors. Another one is the Veterans Homeless uh, Program. They have a connection with um, the, the VA of Connecticut. Uh, they refer, they, the VA refers some uh, people to Bethel who are homeless, and then the two agencies work together to find housing. And it's interesting because it's been a shorter stay. Those, those vets have a shorter stay out of Bethel. And I would just add, in my years of working as a social worker, um, I always wanted very badly to get people into Bethel because it's a small shelter. It's very hard to get into, frankly, but it's excellent. And they do much more than the bed and the meals. Um, they uh, offer these kinds of programs. They have very strong case management services. And I always felt that people would begin the task of becoming not homeless and getting some skills and education and so forth. To access, if anyone knows of someone needing um, the shel a shelter here anywhere, is, is through the statewide program 211. That's what you have to do. They have a coordinating uh, system within 211. Uh, it could be this shelter, it could be anything, depending on what the need is and where the people are. So thank you. We are collecting Oh, I forgot this part, I'm sorry. We're collecting um, money for Bethel, which we will send. But we also, the missions team also made the decision to use November as our hands-on, which will be collecting food for our purple pantry box out on the street there. So we have the uh, plastic bin outside for people who want to drop it by during the week, or it, I actually think it's still out there now, or you could bring it on Sunday and we'll start to uh, get a little bit more supply for our purple pantry box. Thank you. Our scripture reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12 and can be found on page 785 of your pew Bible. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. May God bless these words to our understanding. Let us pray. Holy One, grant us eyes to see and ears to hear the message you would have for us this day. Open our hearts to the reading, hearing, and understanding of your Holy Word. It is in your name we pray. Amen. So for those who uh, slept in for a week or so. Last Sunday, you may remember that we celebrated Halloween. What most folks wandering around in witches' hats and animal costumes were less aware of, most likely, is that this past week on November 1st, we also honored another holiday, an older tradition known as All Saints Day. For various reasons, All Saints Day and its sister All Souls Day on November 2nd have fallen into relative obscurity, with the possible exception of those in Roman Catholic circles 
and those of Latino descent for whom the Dia de los Muertos continues to play a strong role in culture and history. But All Saints Day and All Souls Day have a rich tradition, and I was pondering this as I was preparing my message for today. Who are the saints? What are we talking about? What does a saint even look like? To be considered a saint in the traditional Roman Catholic sense, an exhaustive investigation is done into that person's background and entire life history. That person must have performed at least two identifiable and verifiable miracles, usually physical healings, and several other acts must have been carried out, including the exhumation of the deceased body. We're back to Halloween in some weird circular way here. <laughs> but then, after a few additional benchmarks, only with the Pope's approval can one become a saint. These are high standards. But for our Protestant UCC 21st century, postmodern, postcritical, post just about everything, culturally sensitive and thoughtful ears, who are the saints? Saints are not a big part of our biblical tradition. And yet Jesus does talk about those, particularly in today's passage, who are blessed by God. The words Jesus uses to describe the most holy of his day in his Sermon on the Mount are such familiar phrases to us now, but they would have been stunning, absolutely stunning to the ears of his listeners in his time. Blessed, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. At the end of his Sermon on the Mount, Matthew records that the crowds are just astonished by what Jesus has said. What do our ears hear today? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed is the man who finds it hard to maintain hope after being out of work for six months. Wanting, but not really believing that that next phone call will be his saving grace. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed is the woman who cries herself to sleep at night, aching with loneliness, as the negative pregnancy test lies in her bathroom wastebasket. Blessed are the meek. Blessed is the child who is so painfully shy that she has trouble talking to new people let alone making friends. These people Jesus calls saints. For unlike the chief priests and the Pharisees, those in positions of political and fiscal power, the poor in spirit, the mourners, and the meek, and the merciful, and the pure in heart, and the peacemakers, these people knew that they couldn't do it alone. These people are humbled and realize that they need God. And the crowds drank up Jesus's words as thirsty people who had never tasted water like this, certainly not living water. Who are the saints for you? Tanya comes to my mind and heart. Tanya, not her real name, was 12 when I first met her. I was fresh to this church and still getting to know my way in a new place. But Tanya always quieted my nerves with a big smile and a high jill, complete with her characteristic little wave. The fact that Tanya happened to be born with Down syndrome never slowed her down. She fully participated in that year's confirmation class. And in fact, when the class would invariably devolve into idle chatter, Tanya would call us to task. Come on, guys, she'd say, exasperated. It's time to listen to Jill. <laughs> she wrote her end of the year assignment and focused it on God's love, which she clearly understood and fully integrated into how she tried to interact at school with her parents and with her brother. Tanya is one of God's saints. I also remember Bill. Bill was a black man in his early 70s, and he was not doing well when I began to visit him in my hospital chaplain days. When I first met him and asked how he was doing, he replied, I'm blessed. 
I'm so blessed. I was trained to hear denial in such over-the-top statements, and I asked him to explain what he meant. Well, God loves me, and I have this, he said, pointing to his dialysis machine. Bill went on, this is such a blessing. What an amazing machine to keep me alive just a little bit longer. Maybe it was so you could visit me. We talked for some time about his family, his faith, and his high spirit, and his complete lack of fear about death. Bill wasn't in denial about what was to happen to him shortly. He talked about it openly and with sincere appreciation for a life well lived. It was one of the most joyful visits I've ever encountered or experienced with one of the most courageous men I have met. We only saw each other twice more before he died, but I was gifted to spend additional time with his family about six months later. And when I shared how much our visits had meant to me, they laughed. That was so like Bill, always sharing his love with somebody else. You saw the real man. Bill is one of my saints. And one more, I remember Samantha. Samantha was 100 years old, and she was adjusting to living in a long-term care facility after finally having to move out of her house. But her age deceived many, and I soon learned not to underestimate this woman, for Samantha was as sharp as a tack and extremely observant, and she told it like it was. During one of my visits, she shared with me about her new roommate, a woman from Asia who could not speak English. Samantha had watched the staff's frustration in communicating with this new resident, who appeared inexplicably agitated and was pointing to her head. Samantha finally chided everyone in the room. All she wants is a comb. Her quivering hands dug into her own purse, produced a comb which she handed to the woman. The woman's eyes lit up, and the two became fast friends. Samantha had refused to become mired in her own loss of freedom. Instead, in her own keen way, she observed the loss of another and helped when several others involved did not have eyes to see what was being communicated. When I praised her for this kindness, she put me in my place and said, Jill, darling, <laughs> that is what you are supposed to do. <laughs> Share God's love and listen. <laughs> Samantha is one of my saints. <laughs> Child with Down syndrome, a dying man, and a centenarian don't seem to have much in common. By the world's standards, they would be considered meek, people in need of healing, imperfect people whom others could simply brush by in the crowd, but for me, these are some of my saints. Because they knew who they were, and they were unafraid to minister from that place of knowing their belovedness and knowing the belovedness of others. Meekness is not the same as fear. In fact, saints are usually quite bold, even in the midst of their reduced status as viewed by the culture around them. I'd like to try something with all of you today. I'd like you to take a moment and think about your saints. Your saint could, your saints could include your grandmother, your spouse, a best friend. It could be someone alive or deceased. It could be someone you met recently who helped you at a very important moment, or it could be an old friend. It could be someone you only met once, a chance encounter. Or it could be someone you've known since you were yay big. In a moment, I'm going to ask you all for a name. Just a name. I would love to hear stories, but for now, just the name. So take a second. Think about your scene. Okay, do some of you have names in mind? Okay, who can tell me the name of a saint? Feel free to just say it out loud. Kelly.
Thank you. What we're going to do now is everyone say your name out loud, all at once, so we can honor them, recall them into this space, and remember that they are with us. On the count of three, let us all say a name. One, two, three. Thank you. This is a naming of God's children who are not forgotten, neither by God nor by us. These people surround us. Our saints are as close to us as our very breath. For our saints who have died, this is a word of comfort. They are indeed still alive, though not in the same way, but they are indeed still alive. One final question for all of us, beloved of God. Who are the saints for you today? We meet these people both in our own selves and in those around us. They are anyone who would stand up where they find themselves and risk being shocking for the sake of speaking something that is true and right and just. We join with the saints, both those whose names we know and those whose names we have never heard before. We join with all of them at the table, at the communion table. Gathering tables are rare these days, and not just because of COVID. Gathering tables that are really, really welcoming are even rarer. But here at the table and in the church, the welcome remains. It is a welcome of love for all people, which is a belief that we carry in our hearts as saints wherever we go. For yes, we also carry that sainthood within us. Wherever our feet take us, to school, to the workplace, even to the voting booth, as it likely did last week, God follows alongside and within us. May the bold welcome of love, which the saints have passed down for us to now carry, hold us close together in these days. Being part of the Christian church and approaching the table is a foretaste of the heavenly banquet. It's an appetizer round. It's the beginning of what will eventually happen when the world reaches completion and we see Jesus and our loved ones and all the saints face to face again in the glorious kingdom. And until that day, we remember. We remember our saints, we remember loved ones, we remember one another, and we remember our God. May we continue to live lives in which we remember the love God has shown us, seen in the faces of loved ones and strangers alike, all saints, all God's children. In the name of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah.
give us courage to feel you. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new way to build our lives. It's a grand old way. Our Lord, please lead us not into temptation's eye. Oh, God, deliver us in your righteousness. And I'm so it's a brave new world. Oh God, give us courage to be with It's a brand new day. It's a brand new way to live our lives. It's a grand old way. Oh, we gotta walk through that door. together in a spirit of prayer. Holy One, we thank you. We thank you for this place, for this holy space of worship, and for those gathered here. You have brought us in, carrying us in, out of the cold, out of isolation, out of loneliness and despair and hopelessness, and you have provided for us a warm place to gather, people to gather with, a place to rest our weary feet, a place to sing and to pray and to laugh, a place we can call home. And into this sacred space, you have drawn us and knit us together into your church. On this All Saints Day, we remember all of the saints in our lives who have gone before us, all who have warmed these seats and warmed our hearts. May all of the faithful of generations past empower us by their memory to live our lives as a testimony to their spirits and to your spirit. May our lives, all the steps we tread, bind us together so that we may hear your call as the saints did and answer with the same faithfulness. Wherever our feet take us this week, whether to the school or the office, to the soccer fields, or to the choir rehearsals, to the grocery stores, or the voting booths, or anywhere else in all of your creation and all of our culture. May we remember your call in each footprint, in each step forward we take in faith and in our lives. Walk with us, Holy One, and show us the direction in which you would have us go. We pray all of these things and many more in your holy name. Amen. We gather together as the faithful of God, and we do so because those who have gone before us have invested in this place and in this community and have continued to see giving as a faithful response that acknowledges all that God has given us. We are not passing plates per our COVID uh, safety measures, but there are plates in the back and we invite you to give as you feel led as you leave the service today. May we continue to give with generosity in our hearts. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ all people here below. Praise Holy Spirit evermore. What God triumph we adore. Amen. Praise God.
us pray together. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for all the gifts you have so graciously bestowed upon us. Please take our offerings that they may align with your answer to the cries of this world. It is in your name we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. 
We ask you to send your spirit on this bread and wine, on our gifts, and on us as your gathered people. Through this meal, make us the body of Christ, the church. Strengthen your universal church that it may be the champion of peace and justice in all the world. Restore the earth with your grace. Bless all of us in our eating and in our drinking, that our eyes may be opened, that we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst, in each other, and in all for whom Christ died. We pray as Christ our Savior has taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the honor is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This table is not Woodmont UCC's table. It is not a Protestant table. It is God's table. It is open for all who wish to come and receive. May we now eat and drink with joy in our hearts. together in our unison prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious and loving God, you have made us one in the body of Christ and nourished us at your table with holy food and drink. May we be nourished sufficiently to follow in the steps of those gone before us and be sent into the world to do the work you have given us to do. To find the lost and lonely, to heal broken hearts, to free prisoners and make the powerful there. Grant us strength to persevere in resisting evil and to proclaim in all we say and do your good news in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we join together in song.
often say that worship leadership is meant to be done with deep authenticity. And I realize that you folks do announcements now, typically. <laughs> I actually like that better, so I promise I will make a note of that and get that right next time. For now, friends, appreciate the grace and receive this benediction. We are all saints, created in God's image. Your beloved children, and consequently, you have given all you have been given all you need to do the work to which you are called. Go in peace to know and experience the love of God in and around you, and to share that love with all you encounter. Go in peace in the name of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.